Me too. I love you. I love you. I love you. There are so many faces here that I know, and so many beautiful people that have opened their hearts and helped us to achieve our goals in Indonesia and the Philippines. Terima kasih. And so I stand before you because I'm nervous. I take off my shoes because when a mother gives birth, she takes off her shoes. So I believe that the midwife should also take off her shoes for the mother. Because it's only when we make ourselves equal to the people that we are really here to serve that we can do the best job for them. So we're going to talk about Welcome to the World and about a little bit about me, because that's what uh, Tomo and Aska have asked for. <laughs> and I have to tell you that the love I feel for Tomo and Aska, and for their children, and their family, and for Earth Company, I, I don't have words to put to this feeling. So when we talk about my origin, and how I became a keeper of childbirth, how I became a birth keeper, a midwife. Uh, we have to start with, I became a teenage mom when I was only 19 years old, I had my first baby. And so my little daughter, who's now 43 years old, put my feet on a very special path to find my humanity. And then, more than 20 years ago, my own sister was in the United States of America, she was pregnant with her third baby, and she had insurance, and she had a doctor, a specialist, and yet she died from a complication of her pregnancy. I believe that we have to put a golden chain around all mothers, and that golden chain includes the midwives, the doctors, the nurses, the people like you who help and support the mothers and the babies, the husband, or the partner of the mother, we need to make a golden chain around her to protect her and put the mother in the middle. Like the golden chain that Asuka is wearing. <laughs> and this golden chain represents all of you, a link in the chain. And the mother is in the middle. But in my sister's case, the golden chain was broken and she died. And from her death, I found that I could be angry or I could do something for all the sisters, all the mothers, all the daughters, all the women of the world. I could only do so few with my life, but I had to try. And so that led me and my family to move to Bali, Indonesia. So every day on our earth, more than 830 mothers die from complications during their pregnancy and when they're, being, they're giving birth. And most of those deaths, 99%, are occurring in places like Indonesia and the Philippines where we work, like Micronesia, like Bangladesh, like, like the Rohingya people, and, and of course, we have a high maternal mortality rate in Timor-Leste as well. So in the places where the impact heroes are working, we have a very high rate of mothers dying, also babies. And the studies show that 90% of those deaths are preventable. So the work that I do and the work that the midwives and the team of Bumi Sehat in Indonesia and the Philippines does is to prove that even in the high-risk, low-resource settings, we can have incredible, safe, and wonderful outcomes from childbirth. The mothers and the babies don't need to die. The couple in the picture are crying because they had no money to have their babies and they had twins. And they went to the hospital, and when they couldn't pay, the hospital sold their baby, one of their twins, to pay the bill. And so that's why they're crying. But we were able to get human rights attorneys, and as an organization, Bumi Sehat, our organization, was able to fight and get her twin back reunited with her family. So her baby came home. Okay, so the golden chain of care is how we save lives at Bumi Sehat. Bumi is the Earth Mother. The name of our organization is Bumi, Earth Mother, and Sehat is healthy. So we're Healthy Earth Mother Foundation. 
So the way that we save lives and keep the golden chain intact is that we ent implement respectful, gentle, loving childbirth for every single mother and baby and family that comes to us. We also promote evidence-based, safe and gentle, respectful, loving childbirth all over the world. And something that many of you have helped to support us with is our work in disaster relief. As we face the climate crisis, we'll find that we have bigger, more frequent earthquakes, storms, volcanic eruptions, landslides, and disasters that cause very big problems, especially in the poorest communities in the world. So again and again, myself and the midwives of Bumi Sehat are called in response to the disasters because even when there's no hospital, when the mother has lost her home, when she has family that have died, when she has no food and no drinking water, no shelter, she has no place to go, if she's pregnant after the disaster, she's still pregnant. So someone has to care for them and make a structure for them to have a safe delivery of their baby. Okay, so part of our solution is implementing this idea and the practice of gentle childbirth. By loving the mother, by believing in the mother, and giving her support in pregnancy, in labor, in childbirth, and in postpartum, we are not only taking care of the woman, but we're taking care of her baby. So we practice skin to skin and supportive breastfeeding, because breastfeeding is the safest, healthiest, best possible way to feed a baby. So imagine in a disaster zone where there's no clean water. If the baby is fed with infant formula, the chances of that baby dying are more than 300 times the chances of a baby dying who is breastfed. So if we want to save babies, we have to support mothers in breastfeeding. So mothers, in order to breastfeed, they need to be with their babies, they need people to love them and support them, and they need much, much love and care because mothers don't fail to breastfeed, but the system of our healthcare providers fails to support them. In Indonesia, the number of reported deaths of babies that are the result of feeding with the infant formula and in the bottle is 300,000 per year. So we always say that breast milk is so important and that breastfeeding is a superpower. We're called mammals because we have breasts. But this we can feed right. our babies. Isn't that interesting? The breast is more well. important. <laughs> yes, so we talk about the golden chain and first embrace. In the Philippines, we call it unanyaka, the first embrace of life. So when the baby comes from the mother's womb into the world, the baby's not thinking, how much do I weigh? Or what is my head circumference? No, the baby just wants to be with mother, skin to skin. And so by protecting the first embrace, we're also protecting the mother from the chance of hemorrhaging because when you take the baby away, the oxytocin, the hormone of love, will go down and the mother's risk of bleeding too much will go up. Okay. Next. And delaying of the umbilical cord, clamping and cutting, is a human right so that the baby can get his or her full blood supply, including stem cells. So, also, when you're implementing gentle birth, you're supporting families. Here we have four fathers. All of their daughters were born on the same night at Bumi Sehat. There are four different faiths from four different islands. So we get the fathers involved. So this is how we begin to build peace from the, from the moment of birth. When we promote optimal care in our, in our birth center in Bali, here is a picture of seven newborns who were all born on the same morning. Okay, opening birth centers is another way of creating peace, one baby, one mother, one family at a time. And it is with the help of, of Earth Company and our supporters, that we're able to open birth centers in some of the most heartbroken places in the world in the disaster zones. Training midwives, we train about 10,000 midwives annually uh, so that they 
will take their skills and improve upon them, but also open their hearts so that they're practicing with love. This was last week, we were training midwives in Bangladesh. So in empowering the midwives and the birth keepers of Japan, how many of you here are midwives or birth keepers or doulas? Hi, yes, many of you here. Okay, postpartum togetherness. This mother lost two of her children in the tsunami waters. And 11 months later, she gave birth to twins. Next. Uh, we preserved the golden chain in the Philippine disaster zone. Uh, this is a baby, one of 777 that were born in a small two by two and a half meter tent in the Philippines after the big typhoon Haiyan. <coughs> So here are some of the Rohingya refugee mothers and babies in the Hope Field Hospital in Bangladesh. We took this picture a few days ago. So poverty need not break the golden chain if people will help. And this is in Lombok, where last year we had devastating earthquakes. And our Bumi Sehat midwives helped this mother have her baby. And this is the only home she has. And then educating the youth, we have a beautiful Bumi Sehat Youth and Resource Center is from the heart of Japan, from the help of Earth Company working with Hinoki. And this Youth and Re Resource Center not only is an education center, but when we have eruptions of the volcano in Hawaii, our refugee families can stay here. So international connections like coming here and meeting you and going around the world and working together with many organizations uh, is one of the ways that we strengthen the golden chain around the mother and the baby. International Childbirth Initiative is something that all of you that are involved in childbirth, doctors, midwives, nurses, and doulas will be hearing more about in the coming year, but it's a very big, wonderful evolution in childbirth. This is our Youth Resource Center and Evacuation Center. Next. And step by step, we can build world peace together. Every baby, every child, is a small piece of peace. And when we protect the baby at birth, when we, we prevent trauma, and we keep the baby with the mother, with the family, then that baby will have an intact capacity to love and trust and build peace on earth. 